All right, so it's a sad trip because all the snails are dying. I'm gonna record what I can find, do kind of like a final last visit. Uh, basically what happened is earlier, habitat loss, over collecting, we're killing them. But now there's a new flatworm species from New Guinea that got introduced. Possibly people introduced it to get rid of those giant African snails in Miami and they just kind of hated all snails. So, you know, kill them all, but that's also gonna include some awesome snails, the Florida tree snails. Uh, so, I mean, this might be the last year I'm able to do this, so I wanted to record one last video showing you these awesome tree snails that are down in Florida. All right, so let's go and see what we can find. Before we talk about the snails, let me talk about the worms really quick. These are specifically the New Guinea flatworm that are spreading, coincidentally, in the Miami area. Now, as some of you may know, that is the same place where the giant African land snail outbreaks have been happening. So, could this have been an intentional introduction to try and kill off the giant African land snails? Maybe. Who could have done it? Either the USDA, could have been the big sugar companies that are concerned about their crops down in Florida, uh, some concerned farmer or vigilante citizen who wanted to help contribute to exterminating the snails, or it also could have been a plant shipment that found its way into the Miami area through a nursery and then went on to introduce these worms either through adults or eggs that were in the soil and now they've gone on to breed and spread across the South Florida area. I don't know what the truth is. To me, it seems like it's too too good to not be an intentional introduction, but of course you can make up your own mind. And on the screen here, you can see there's a lot of photos of shells that were found of these tree snails in the hammocks. And this is truly an unusual amount of them because I've been looking for snails in Miami and just South Florida in general since around 2009 and I've been there almost every year pretty consistently and whenever I would walk through a hammock like this I would see some live snails and I would be lucky if I found just one or two shells on the forest floor so for somebody to be finding that amount of empty shells it seems like there is a serious problem going on and of course uh, people have photos and have reported sightings of these flatworms all across the South Florida area. So this is a real problem, even though, as you can see, I recorded a lot of live snails. That's kind of not the best representation because I only visited a few different sites. I didn't personally see any flatworms, but of course that doesn't mean that they're not there. So it, it's kind of inaccurate but sort of great for me that I found all these snails and I had something to actually record instead of empty shells. So how serious of an issue is this? Well I think it's pretty serious because it seems like the hammocks that I visited in Miami were a ghost town. The sites that I visited in previous years could barely find any snails and there were some places where I found zero snails and the sites further inland like this one seem to be okay but it seems like it's just a matter of time before the flatworms spread to those hammocks as well uh, will they for sure spread to those hammocks I don't know if they do when is it going to happen i also can't really you know guess specifically uh, but it's just there's this potential problem that's very serious and also i do want to say if you try to find these snails on your own make sure you either disinfect your shoes something like lysol uh, between each hammock or what i did was i wore rain boots one time wore one pair of shoes the next time, then I had a third pair of shoes, then I had flip-flops, so I just constantly wore a different pair of shoes. I had them all in the trunk of the car, so in between visits I would take them off, put them on, and then go to the next site. So that helps because these flatworms have very small eggs, and if you get them on your shoes and you go from one place to another, 
you can spread the flatworms that way. So just kind of keep that in mind if you ever want to see these snails and you're walking around in South Florida. All right, so what you see here is Orthalicus floridensis, and then after this, I'm going to have a clip of Orthalicus rhesus. I didn't really bother to identify it any further, so I don't know if it's an Orthalicus rhesus subspecies rhesus or subspecies Nesodryas, but I guess it doesn't really matter. What I found interesting was that I saw a lot of Ligueus, I saw some Orthalicus rhesus, and I saw barely any Orthalicus floridensis, and in my mind, those proportions should have been sort of reversed. I thought I would find a lot of Orthalicus floridensis and barely any of the colorful ligueus. So that, that was an interesting phenomenon. And I didn't even include all of the footage of the ligueus because I think about 50% of the ligueus that I saw had white shells or the white shell with a very faint green stripe on it. So... I looked and I had 15 minutes of footage of colorful snails and I thought, okay, if I include the white snails, that's going to be like a half hour video and nobody's going to be paying attention that long. So I didn't include the white snails, but there was quite a number of them. So now we're going to go down this road to see if we can find any more colorful versions of the Ligueus, see if we can find any more of those yellow-shelled Orthalicus, and if there's possibly going to be any Orthalicus rhesus, either Nisodryas or the rhesus rhesus subspecies in this next area. All right, so let's check it out. All right, so we've arrived at the next location. We're in a raincoat because there's lots of mosquitoes here. It's very warm, but still, I'd rather be dying of heat than dying of mosquitoes. I already got one on my face, a little too late, got blood everywhere, but that's okay. That's kind of the sacrifice you have to make if you want to see these tree snails. Um, so we're going to go look around here. I actually always wanted to go to the Everglades, but I never did manage to go into the actual park. The previous years, I kind of just went into the hammocks around the Miami area, or I went, you know, off a road somewhere into the trees and managed to find some. But this is the Everglades National Park. So if they're anywhere, they should be here, and there should be lots of them. So I'm going to kind of do what I did previously with kind of a slideshow video type of um, type of video. Probably will narrate it, we'll see, but let's see what we can find today. All right, so right off the bat, we found another Ligueus, and as you can see, it's a yellow color with some green stripes down the shell, and then the next one that we see is almost a pure white variety of Ligueus, and of course, like I said, there were a lot of these, but I figured they're too boring. And then, once again, we're going to have an Orthalicus floridensis. It's kind of hidden in these leaves, but I try to get it in the center of the screen. And after that, we have a Ligueus, but it looks a lot like the Orthalicus floridensis because it has that yellow shell fading into white with the brown stripe on it. And then here's another Orthalicus floridensis. So that was one of my favorite varieties because I found it interesting that there are so many different Ligueus color forms and that there can be one that looks very similar to those more plain Orthalicus floridensis. And there's going to be another one coming up in the video. I uh, don't know exactly when I recorded it, but it's coming up soon. In the meantime, here's some more Ligueus. This is kind of an interesting clip, and by interesting, I mean not so great because it was very sunny so hard to see anything in that one and then of course here we have a very brightly colored one it's yellow and it has very strong orange pigment um, on the shell here's another one with a little bit less but still some orange pigment on the shell very nice to see and then we're going to have some more white ones coming up if i remember correctly yeah like that one and then after this clip there's the white one on top and then the white and yellow with the brown stripe that looks almost like an Orthalicus floridensis. So really nice that I saw two of those, got them for the video. Very nice color variety. Uh, I didn't get all of the color varieties of Ligueus, of course. I always wanted to see the blue barburi variety, but most of them ended up being kind of white or the white and yellow ones white and green 
some of the orange ones, but I guess I'm still lucky that I found any Ligulus at all, because some people may spend their entire lives and never see them, some people may have an extremely hard time finding them, and if they become extinct in the next few years, then it's just going to be totally impossible to find a Ligulus of any kind, like this very, very nice brown and orange one. So I should consider myself lucky that I saw anything at all, but of course I still have that, you know, feeling like, ah, oh, if I looked harder, I could have found more color varieties. I wanted to see them all, but I think that would just require too much walking around and, you know, possibly stepping on a snake or something as well. That's kind of also why I stayed on the path on the outskirts of the hammock. I didn't really want to walk around through the thorns and, you know, snakes and other wildlife that might be there. But still, for the trails, that was a lot more liguous than I would expect to find. All right, so you might be wondering, well, if there's an extinction going on, what can we do to stop it? Well, of course, you can get rid of the flatworms, but I don't really know if there's any good eradication plan for those yet. I don't know if the you know, Florida biologists have figured anything out. But one thing I did want to mention to anyone who's not familiar with these snails is that it's illegal to collect them. It's against federal law. So make sure you don't take any of these snails. And also there have been a number of attempts to keep them in captivity. Even, you know, wildlife agencies in South Florida had outdoor enclosures right in South Florida, and they still were unsuccessful with keeping these. So it's extremely difficult, if not impossible. So make sure you don't collect any of these. All right, so we're at the final destination. Let's see if we can find anything. And I realized that this entire time, I forgot to wear the shirt that I ordered just for this trip. So I'm gonna put it on for this clip. And we're gonna try and see if we can find anything at this last location. A lot of pine trees, so that's not a good sign because they don't really live in pine trees. But there's a trail down the road. We're gonna go down it a little bit and see what we can find. All right, so let's go. All right, so I was getting ready to say that this turned out generally to be nothing, because as you can see, this is kind of a, a pine tree trail, but on this side, we do have some more tropical plants that aren't pine trees, uh, some regular trees, and I just found one. So let's flip it around and we're gonna go back to the main path, see if we can drive down the road. Uh, I'm just gonna be here for a little bit to see if there's anything. Uh, so let's see the one I just found on this fallen dead tree. So this Ligulus is interesting because as you can see, the coloration on its shell seems to stop at one point and when it keeps growing, it's just white. And I've seen another phenomenon like this before where the shell was black, it had a growth line where it stopped growing for a while, and then once the growth continued, it turned into yellow. So it looks almost like you're splicing up two different uh, varieties into one shell. Um, glad I got a clip of it for the video, and I maybe have a photo of that other one somewhere on my computer. I don't know, I'd have to look. I'm not gonna include in this video anyways, but I do hope I have it somewhere. Uh, anyways, here are the remaining snails of this trip. This is the last one I took a video of. It has a very nice orange shell, and with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Yeah. All right, so I think that's gonna be the end of the trip. The other trails are kind of very far down the road, and maybe I'm just being a little bit lazy, but, or tired, but, you know, I think some people might say this is the last year possibly I'll be able to do that but uh, I think we've seen enough uh, so for one last thing before I left not only did I get some patches and pins for my shirt a rain jacket got this book that I've wanted for a long time so it's got full color photos in it not really sure how much information they have about the Ligulus and everything else in here, but found it at the visitor center, so I bought it. So uh, I think that's gonna wrap up this final Florida snail trip. So we've seen what we could see. Kind of a shame that those flatworms are gonna kill everything, but I guess it is what it is, and we made the best out of it during this final year.
All right, so thanks for uh, watching.